Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial on STS201 and this time we are treating hypothesis testing. We are only treating the terminologies and in subsequent tutorials we are going to cover the calculation. So let's get right in. Starting with hypothesis, actually, like I said, um, um, like I said in the previous tutorial, this I'm just going to go straight. I won't, I won't waste time explaining everything. You just need to understand this before we can treat some questions, on, some questions under it. So, hypothesis is actually like if we were taught right from uh, secondary school. It's just a guess. But this time is scientific guess. A scientific guess is actually an hypothesis. So, when if it's if if that's why before anything becomes a law, it goes through a lot of process of testing. It's it is it will first be called an hypothesis before when it's not tested over time, it then becomes a law. So, an hypothesis is just a scientific guess. Now, <clears throat> when you're not talking of testing an hypothesis, it's just the process of validating the hypothesis. The hypothesis is put through a lot of tests to know if it is true or false. It's just the process of validating it, and that's what we're doing. That's what this topic is all about. So, now, how does hypothesis testing now come into statistics? For example, if a person tells you that his age is 50 years and you looking at the person the person looks like 20s in his 20s then it's an hypothesis this age is 50 years an hypothesis now it's not left to you to go through the process of validating the hypothesis so statistics has ways of validating hypothesis now that's when so many topics comes under like the t-test ANOVA and the likes there are ways of validating hypothesis okay so now this is an hypothesis now this now takes us to the null the null hypothesis in your hypothesis you can split it into to the null and the alternative the null hypothesis is always written as h naught alternative hypothesis is written as h1 so the null hypothesis actually picks what it it goes along with your statement. It goes along with your statements, like like from what we have this hypothesis here. The person claims that his age is fifty, so the null hypothesis picks it that yeah, the age is fifty. It goes along with what you said, and the alternative hypothesis negates it. The age is not fifty. The age is not 50. So that was the alternative of hypothesis. It just goes, it, it picks the opposite of the null. That's 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 null and that's the alternative hypothesis. So now going to the one tail test. What is the one tail test? One tail test is actually, for example, now this age age equals to the one tail test means the test goes only in one direction and the two tail test means it goes in two directions now for this one it is actually a two tail test and how did how, how do i know if it is not if the alternative is not 50 that means it is greater than 50 or it is less than 50 isn't it so since it is going in both direction on the on the timeline on the graph timeline then it is two-tailed i believe we understand that so this is a two-tailed test so it's just it's going in both directions and um how do you know one tail test for example if the person claims that he is older than 50 years so the person claims that his age is greater than 50 years isn't it so 
if it's greater than 50 if it, if the alternate if the null picks greater than 50 years sorry this thing is not calibrated well this my pen is not calibrated well so if the alternative picks not greater than 50 years um if the not alternative if the null picks greater than 50 years then alternative picks is less than 50 years or less or equals 50 years <clears throat> so it actually goes in one direction this one goes this one goes in just in one direction in the sense that by the time you draw it on the graph less than 50 years this is so if it is not less than then it is greater so it's, it does go it goes only in one direction but because this one picks only one value 50 years then if it is not 50 years then it is greater or less that's a two tail test so that's the difference between the one tail test and two tail test okay now let's go to another let's now go to the type uh, type one error and type two error normally normally the null hypothesis no, normally the null hypothesis it depends on actually the conclusion if the null hypothesis is true normally you have to accept it and if it is false you have to reject it When your null is true, normally you have to accept, and if it's false, you have to reject. That's how it should be. So, when the alternative, when the when the null hypothesis is true, normally you should accept it. That's what you should do. But when you reject it, when it is true, then you've committed a type one error, which is also known as the alpha. Error. You've committed the type one error, and normally when the alternative is false, you should reject it. That's what you should do. But accepting it when it is false, that's a type two error or the beta error. I believe this one is simple and straightforward. Now, a typical question you get. In this is okay now like the question we started with the person claims that he's 50 years and you looking at him it looks like he is in his mid 20s you looking at him it looks like he's in his mid 20s and he now tells you that he's 50 years and you accepted which kind of hero have you committed no i want you to think it through Looking at the person, he looks like he's in his 20s, but he claims that he's 50 years and fine, you accepted it. Now, the fact that is the fact that he said he's 50 years means it is not true, isn't it? It is false because he looking at him, you know, he's in his mid 20s and yet he claims he's 50. So he is false, but you accepted it that okay, let's just accept what he said. Then, which kind of error is that it is false? And yet you accepted it. Which kind of error is that? That's a type two error. I believe that's clear now. And another good example is a teacher punish comes to a class and punishes an innocent student. That's one, two, and it and the same teacher the same teacher releases the culprit. Now the teacher comes into class and releases an innocent student. Which kind of error has he committed? Number one, the fact that the student is innocent means he hasn't done anything which means is false is he has been falsely accused that's false is innocent means that statement that whatsoever they told whatever they said he has done 
is false it's not true now the teacher now punishing him means he accepts that the student is actually the one in fault that has the fault so the child has committed a type 2 error now in this place he committed a type 2 error now the same teacher now releases the culprit the person that did the words they claimed that yeah, the, the, the students had done the other person that did it gone, 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 was released now which kind of error is that as a type 1 hero because he is the one that has done it that the student that was released is the one that has done it but yet the teacher did not accept that he did, he did it so releasing him means the teacher didn't accept that he did it so that's the teacher committed a type 1 hero in this case so I believe what we've said so far is explanatory so as time goes I'm going to be treating the calculation of this aspect thanks for staying with us peace